hey, in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to research land before buying it. All right, it's always better to figure out the pros, the cons, the anything before you actually pay for it. So in this episode, I'm gonna teach you what to look for, make sure you're not falling into a trap, and you know very well, like things that you can actually avoid. <music> All right, so I got several points to make in this video. The first is I'm gonna give you access to a checklist that I usually only teach behind closed doors in my masterclass. Second, I'm gonna walk you through the process that my team takes before we buy and sell any piece of land. We've done over 271 parcels of land with this exact process. And stick around to the very end, and this, I'm gonna give you a free gift that will make your life easier in purchasing a parcel of land and what to check for, when to check, and how to check it. All right, so it's really important to research the land before buying, obviously. So that's why you're here, that's why you're checking out this video. You must be about to buy a piece of land. So I wanna kinda arm you with all the tools, all the checklists, everything necessary. So I'm actually gonna break down the process that my my team uses that we've used to purchase over 271 parcels of land in the last five years. And at the end, I'm gonna actually give you access to this list so you can use this later on if you ever need to. So first thing, the first thing you wanna check, is this the land buildable? Is this land buildable? You know, you wanna start your search by calling the county planning and zoning and asking what is allowed on this land? Is it a mobile home? Is it a single family residence? Is it apartment complexes? What do you guys allow on this land? What do the setbacks look like? You know, setbacks are another word for, we need 25 feet from the road, you need 25 feet from the back part of the property, 25 feet from the right side, 25 feet from the left side. This is generally across the country, you know, 20 to 25 feet for setbacks in neighborhoods. Some areas a little smaller, you know, the tighter the neighborhood, the more dense it is. And some areas it's a little larger. So that those are things you're gonna find out with planning and zoning. Is it buildable? What can you build? How big of a house can you build on it? So those are very important things when doing research to figure out before you're buying a piece of land. The second thing, how big is the land? What does the parcel look like? Is it five acres? Is it 10 acres? Is it 5,000 square foot? That goes back to the first point, like what is buildable? Like in certain parts of Colorado, you have to have at least 5,000 square foot to build on. So if the property is only 4,900 square foot, you don't have a buildable lot. Next is, is this property free and clear? Like, is there an encumbrance on it or a lien? Does a seller have a mortgage on this land? You wanna know these things. It's okay if they actually owe money on it, but you wanna make sure that when you pay for this property, when the title company you know, disperses your funds to the seller, you wanna make sure that any debts, back taxes, liens, encumbrances have been paid off first before the seller gets to keep any money because you wanna get a property that's free and clear. You don't wanna inherit the liens, encumbrances, or the back taxes especially if you're paying good money for a property. You wanna make sure all that stuff's paid for first and then the seller gets to keep the rest. All right, so what if there's multiple owners? Are they all ready, willing, and able to sell? You know, I've found cases where I've uh, negotiated a, a sales price between two brothers and the third brother comes in at the very end and he doesn't wanna sell, you know, because there's some type of, uh, you know, issue or he wants to build a cabin or a house on it or you know he's got some type of emotional tie to the land so you want to make sure all sellers everyone that's on title on the deed is ready willing and able to sell able to sign mentally there not in some nursing home or you know all these things you want to make sure all these things and a lot of times the title company can actually help you wade through this process all right the next point is there legal access? Can you get to the property? Or are you trespassing against state land or other people's properties? Is there a road going right in front of it that you can get to this land legally? And we call this ingress and egress. Do you have this legal capacity to enter the property? And most of the time, it's on the deed. It's actually in the legal description showing how you're gonna enter and exit the property. And if you don't have legal ingress and egress, a lot of times a real estate attorney can help you with this or establish this because well, counties don't want you to have landlocked property because that property is not, I mean, they're not getting taxes on it usually. I mean, at the end of the day, the county wants the revenue from this land. You want to check Google Earth, something as simple as checking Google Earth to make sure you're not buying a junkyard or a crater in the ground. Now, I mean, one step better than checking Google Earth is literally going to the land yourself or sending someone there. Just because you're not, you know, same state, same city, area, doesn't mean that you can't send a runner, send someone 
someone there. I find people all the time on Facebook buy sell groups to go for $25 and take photos and just step on the land and say, hey, you actually have a huge junkyard on this land, but we also check Google Earth as well. All right, is there water available on the land? Most land does not have water available. And what kind of water can you use? Can you put a well? Or do you have enough space to put a well? Or is there city water already running? You know, things like this, you wanna know this before you actually pay for the land. All right, before I share my last several points, I want you to definitely click the subscribe button. Subscribe to my channel. I'm on here five days a week giving content, giving you ways to buy and sell land and research land and how to become financially free through land. So definitely hit that subscribe button. All right, next. What are you gonna do for septic service? Are you gonna use a sewer system? Is there a local city? Is there a community sewer? Or do you have the ability to put a septic system? Going back to Colorado again, I learned this lesson the hard way. I bought a piece of land that was just under an acre and it was kind of in the middle of nowhere and there was no sewer lines within miles, like five miles. Well, this land was too small to put a septic system on it. It had to be a minimum of one acre to put a septic system on it. So guess what? The land that I thought was buildable, that I purchased already, was not buildable. So I had to sell it to someone for less money than what I planned on. And luckily, a truck driver purchased it for me because he was just looking for a piece of land to park his truck on overnight. And he never planned to put a house or a cabin or anything on it. But I want you to know these things before you go into purchasing the land because I would have paid a, w a lot less for this land if I would have known that it wasn't buildable. All right, next, are there any breaks in the chain of title? And this is something that the title company will help you with. But what is a break in the chain of title? You know, for instance, if uh, John and Wilma Smith sell the land to Bill Gates. Well, John and Wilma Smith need to be on the, the deed going to Bill Gates. But if it's just John Smith going to Bill Gates, that's a break in the chain of title. Wilma Smith also, not to be confused with Will Smith, but Wilma had to sign off on that deed as well. All right, and you wanna do a title search and owner encumbrance. And that's, I mean, going back to the title company, that's kind of a given, but it's gotta be said. I want this to be so simple and, and easy to understand. You know, it's little steps like this. Just do a title search, have a title company do it, and buy a title insurance policy on the land. All right, I kind of briefly discussed this a little bit, talking the planning and zoning, but what is it zoned for? Is it agriculture? Is it industrial? Is it something that you could put you know four units on or five units on you want to know what it's exact actually zoned for and that's another call or a conversation with planning and zoning all right how far is electric service you know is there a power pole within like a couple feet or is it a couple miles like how are you going to get electric to this property if there's no power or electric or power poles within like five miles or a couple miles like that's an absorbent amount of money to run electric very far. So are you able to get away with using solar panels? Will the county allow that? So you want to know these things in the beginning. And my final point to make is how much are the taxes each year? You want to know how much your taxes cost. Like a lot of times vacant raw land, especially if it's agriculture, the taxes are super low. But you don't want to get caught up buying a piece of land out, out in a development or a planned unit development that the taxes are like crazy amount per year. And then HOA, here's another fact. Like what does the HOA cost? Is there a landowners association? Is there an HOA? You want to know these things in advance. All right, you might be buying one parcel of land or you might be thinking about building a business business and turning in this, this into something that serves you and your family and others. This is the kind of stuff that the Land Sharks provides. I've got a tried and true method that teaches people how to buy land at massive discounts, how to research it, how to avoid the pitfalls that I've made on my first like 20 land purchases. I've done over 271 parcels of land and if I could help you avoid a lot of these steps, you know, I want to do that. So head over to thelandsharks.com, check out my coaching course, um, schedule a call, talk to my team. If if you feel like we're a great fit, I'd be honored to coach you.